There's a saying erroneously attributed to the Chinese. May you live in interesting times. Depending on your view, that can be either a blessing or a curse. And right now, this saying accurately describes the situation that beginner iOS developers find themselves in today with the release of iOS 13. iOS 13 introduced Swift UI, which is the hot new way to create user interfaces in Swift. One of the cool things about Swift UI is that your user interfaces are created completely in code. But while you're coding, you can see a dynamic preview of this code in Swift UI's Canvas editor. And you have a choice. You can either code the user interface yourself, or you can use Swift UI's Canvas editor to code it on your behalf. This is nice because Swift UI gives you the benefits of being able to construct a user interface via code, combined with the benefits of being able to visualize your work as you go. It also makes working with Swift UI really nice in a real world team based environment. Apple has been promoting Swift UI as the preferred way to build new apps for many reasons, including the fact that it makes it easier to port your iOS apps to Apple's other platforms, such as macOS, watchOS, and tvOS. Swift UI is so new that outside of Apple, there aren't that many experts on it yet. And for the next little while, apps written using Swift UI will be few and far between. So by learning it now, you'll be getting a serious head start over other developers. But there are a few big disadvantages about Swift UI that you should know about. First, Swift UI only works on iOS 13 or later. Although iOS users are known for being pretty quick at upgrading their OS, most companies want to make sure their app supports at least an OS version or two back. Because of this, most companies won't be able to start rerunning their apps to use Swift UI right away. Second, Swift UI is pretty early in development. It just came out, so there are still some missing features or rough edges. That's another reason some companies want to give Swift UI just a little more time to mature. Because of these two disadvantages, we recommend taking a middle ground approach. Swift UI represents the future of iOS development, so it's a good idea to start learning it now. There's a lot to learn, so if you start now, you'll be well prepared for the future. You can even use Swift UI if you have a brand new or experimental project that you're okay with only running on iOS 13. You also need to be okay with living on the bleeding edge, which means you have to deal with a few rough edges. Now, at least for the next one to three years, UIKit isn't going anywhere. Most companies will continue to use UIKit for their critical projects while they keep one eye on how SwiftUI matures in the years ahead. So now it comes time to answer your burning question. Which should I learn, SwiftUI or UIKit? As of today, here's our answer. It's both. If you're serious about being a professional iOS developer, our recommendation is to learn both SwiftUI and UIKit. Learning SwiftUI is important because it's the future of iOS development. SwiftUI is huge and there's a lot to learn, so it's a good idea to get started early. And if you're making a new or experimental app, you can make it with SwiftUI today. Learning UIKit is important too. Because SwiftUI requires iOS 13 and it's on the bleeding edge, most companies will be using UIKit in their apps for at least the next one to three years. So if you want to work at one of those companies, it's important for you to be able to work with those code bases too. I also just want to point out that it's not all or nothing. It's possible to make certain part of your app with Swift UI and the rest with UIKit. As companies begin to transition from UIKit to Swift UI, we expect to see many code bases with a mixture of both Swift UI and UIKit code in the years ahead. But don't worry, we've got your back and we have a plan for how to teach you everything you need to know. In our newly updated iOS and Swift for Beginners learning path, we'll start off by learning Swift UI, since it's the latest and greatest way to create user interfaces in Swift, and it's the future of iOS development. You'll use Swift UI right away in this course, your first iOS and Swift UI app, and then later on again in your second iOS and Swift UI app. At the end of your second iOS and Swift UI app, we'll take a break and we'll talk more about what UIKit is exactly, how it differs from Swift UI, and more about why it's still worth learning even though Swift UI exists. Then we'll ask you to go back and watch an alternative version of these courses, which cover UIKit, your first iOS and UIKit app, and your second iOS and UIKit app. You should be able to get through both of those courses really quickly, since you'll already be familiar with how to build your user interfaces in Swift UI. You may even find it fun to compare and contrast the differences, and it'll be a really nice review of some of the concepts that you've learned. After that, you'll be familiar with the basics of both Swift UI and UIKit development. The rest of the courses on our site will cover both Swift UI and UIKit concepts, and sometimes even use them together. So for new iOS developers having to learn two ways of creating user interfaces all at once, these are definitely some interesting times. But hey, learning new things is part of the joy of being a programmer. 
We're loving learning Swift UI and we're so excited to be on the cutting edge of the future and we hope you enjoy this journey with us.